Hey guys, I'm here to talk to you today about how to use Monjero for weight loss. Uh, Monjero is one of the uh, newest medications um, that is being used for weight loss, though it technically is not FDA approved for that. It is FDA approved for patients who have diabetes. Now, the excitement around using it for weight loss is because Eli Litney, the company that makes Monjero, just released results of a recent trial they did, and they saw weight loss of um, over 20% um, for uh, a lot of people in the trial. And so that is uh, why we're so excited. However, I Again, it's not FDA approved. So uh, if it's not FDA approved, that means that it's off-label use, uh, which is allowed now. And so um, I'm going to use a lot of the information from the study and their methods to you know, explain how to use this for weight loss. Now, the dosing is something that's a little different than most medications. So uh, this medication, you have to adjust the dose upwards. So what that means is that you're going to start low and go higher. And that is because we want to avoid uh, potential side effects and that's because how Monjero works. Now, uh, we have another video on this channel explaining how Monjero works, but um, if you're gonna have side effects, it's going to be around uh, something with the GI tract. So uh, most common side effects people had included nausea, vomiting, uh, they had diarrhea, they did have uh, indigestion, uh, burping, gassiness, bloating, uh, some people got abdominal pain. Those are all possibilities. I will say that most of the time those symptoms go away and that's what allows us to go higher on the dose. Now, uh, in the study, they started at 2.5 milligrams and increased the dose 2.5 every four weeks. Uh, most people were able to get to the maximum dose of 15 milligrams. In regards to managing the side effects, of because how it works, one of the ways it works is slowing down the GI tract. So uh, we can use strategies to help mitigate that. One strategy would be to eat smaller meals. So it's going to be a good idea to eat less at a meal than you typically would. Or so you're probably going to feel fuller on that smaller amount anyway. Um, another thing you want to do is avoid uh, fatty meals or eat less fat in a meal than you normally would. And then um, not lying down after you've had a meal, again, because it's slowing things down and we can get um, other symptoms like uh, reflux. Uh, in the trial, uh, what they did uh, was ask the uh, providers to simply reduce the calories that participants were taking by 500 calories per day. Um, they used a formula to do this. In fact, here is the table of the formula you use to figure out how many calories that you would normally expend and just to reduce that number by 500. Now, in this formula, they actually took that number and multiplied it by 1.3. So along with uh, decreasing the calories by 500 um, per day, the other thing was having uh, 150 minutes of exercise per week. Uh, so that could be something like uh, five days, 30 minutes of exercise per day. Putting this all together, this is how they got such great weight loss. So they started 2.5 milligrams, increased the dose every month, managing those side effects if they develop them. People weren't having side effects, they could increase the dose. Get in their trial, they reduced uh, the person's normal calorie expenditure by 500 calories per day using a formula. Now, if you want to be more accurate, you can use a app to track your food intake for a week. And you know if you haven't gained any weight, that is your general calorie needs. And you can just uh, find that number and subtract 500 from it. Uh, that'd be more accurate. Um, in the study though, the diets were not particularly standardized. So it was based on each clinic's diet um, recommendations. So a general uh, healthy diet will be healthy proteins and uh, low fat proteins, healthy protein. So, you know, chicken, ground beef, so the uh, diets were based on uh, each clinic's uh, recommendation. So we, we don't know for exactly um, diets were most used often. You know, in our clinic though, um, something that will be either elimination type diet or modified paleo diet, at least in the beginning, that is uh, certainly uh, something you can use as a general format. All right, so what does that look like? in real life, how do we put this all together? So we can do 150 minutes of moderate activity. And so that might be just brisk walking, um, an uh, easy bike ride or double tennis, 30 minutes, five times a week, we'll get you there. Um, the other option we have is actually to do 75 minutes of intense activity. So that might be hiking, uh, jogging, or playing basketball, those are all considered high intense activities. So um, even breaking that down, you can do, see that even 15 minutes a day will certainly get you there or less times per week. So 
So in regards to diet, so they did talk about uh, a 500 calorie deficit. So this is just an example, let's say that you need 2000 calories per day. You figure that out either using a formula or um, you actually track your um, input for a week. Now, 2000 will just take off 1500. So how would that break down as far as the macronutrients that we ideally wanna have? So, so let's start with fat, that's the easiest place to start. We want about 30% of our calories from fat and that's going to support our hormones and our nervous system. Uh, so 30% of 1500 is 450. So we got that there. Um, in, in regards to grams, uh, one gram of fat is nine calories. So we can divide, divide that into 450. Um, so it's 50, so 50 grams of fat. In um, regards to protein, generally we want uh, 0.5 to 1 gram per pound of body weight, uh, particularly for exercising. That's going to range anywhere from 400 to 800 calories, which is anywhere from 100 to 200 grams. Um, so this definitely give you some wiggle room. Um, and the rest will be in carbohydrates. So uh, it could be as low as uh, 250 calories, uh, up to 650. So both protein and Carbs give about uh, four calories per gram. So, uh, in regards to the protein, it's, it's going to be anywhere from a, a hundred grams uh, up to two hundred grams. Uh, so, in regards to the carbohydrates, uh, we're looking at anywhere from two hundred fifty to six hundred fifty calories uh, from carbohydrates, and so that's going to be anywhere uh, divided two fifty by four, so eighty-ish. Um, so that would be considered a low-carb diet. 650 divided by four, um, that is going to be, so in the 120s. Um, now, those carb sources, are, we're going to do better if we either pick uh, complex carbs like brown rice, oatmeal, uh, sweet potato, those types of things, or low glycemic carbohydrates like blueberries, strawberries, those type of things. Um, certainly avoiding carbohydrates that are not low glycemic like white rice, bananas, uh, those type of things. So this is how it would look besides the medication part. If you have other questions, please comment below and subscribe if you want to hear more information like this. See you next time.